Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, the ends of earth, faint not, neither is weary. There's no searching of understanding. Give power to them that faint. And God gives us strength. And we thank God for all that he does for us. Amen? Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. And we just thank God for being here. Let's give God a hand on today. Amen. God promises that he will increase our strength if we wait upon him. And we're waiting upon God with expectation. And we thank God for all that the Lord is doing on this morning. We're going to talk about, we've been talking about maintaining. That's what we shared with you on uh, Tuesday when we was here, maintaining, holding on to that that God has given us and uh, the things that God has uh, done for us, to hold on to that to fight to keep that, not to allow it to go. God bless us during the consecration. God did great and mighty things for us, and we thank God for all that he has done for his people, and I thank God for what he has done for me. Meditation. I'm going to encourage you. This is uh, kind of lengthy, so you can read this at home. Uh, please read Luke 1, 26 through 38, then Luke 2, 7 through 19. And the key verse in all this is uh, the 19th verse, uh, Luke 2, 19, which says, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, which means that she meditated upon the things that the angel had spoken to her. The angel visited Mary and uh, share with Mary concerning uh, the birth child, which was Jesus Christ, and he shared with her all the things that uh, she would be doing and all the things that Christ would be doing, his life and his purpose and all of these things, and you would read that when you read it. So I'm asking that you read it. And the Bible said after uh, the angel had spoken to her, she meditated, she pondered the things that the angel had spoken to her. And so in the consecration, we were talking about consecration and what it means to consecrate ourselves to God, to, to focus upon God, to think upon God, to think upon God's word, amen, uh, to think upon uh, uh, the things God has spoken to us and to concentrate upon the Lord, our focus completely upon him. We share with you concerning fasting. And we know fasting is going without food and, and even without water and giving ourselves to God. But it's the concentration with the fasting. Because as we share with you, many people fast uh, for different reasons. Uh, many times we fast because um, when we go into the doctor, they put you on a fast. And so they can uh, examine you and check you out in x-rays. And they can see things better when you have fast and your system has been cleaned out. And it's good to fast. But the fast that God has called for us to do is to fast concerning uh, being lifted of heavy burdens and being delivered from sin and being delivered from bondage and to pray for others that they could be healed and delivered and set free. But with that fasting go, uh, comes concert, where we concentrate ourselves to God and concentrate and focus upon him fully. We give fully ourselves fully to the Lord. Amen. And so on this 21-day concentration that we are, uh, the service part is over, but we're still concentrating ourselves to God. Uh, we want to add to that meditate, to meditate. Meditate is, meditation is so, so important. The reason I say this because many times we read the word of God. Many times we study the word of God. We come to church and we hear the preacher preach and we hear the teacher teach. But then the Bible encourages us to think on these things. Meditate upon the things. Even when you read your uh, 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 Bible daily, after you've read it, after you've studied, then it's good to meditate on that that you've read. Because if not, many times we'll allow it to slip from us. Amen. To repeat it over and over in your mind, to ponder upon it. So the Bible says she kept all these things, everything that the angel spoke to her. The Bible says she kept all these things in her heart and she pondered on them. She meditated upon them. Meditation means to consider or examine a attentively, deliberately, you, you deliberately thinking, you, you, you dwelling upon the things that you have heard and, and that you've read. You pondering it. Uh, you rolling it over in your mind over 
and over. You're repeating it. That's where, where you repeat the scripture. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. You keep on. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You're getting that in your spirit. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. You, you're pondering that. Lord, I'm waiting upon you. Lord, you promised you would increase my strength. Lord, you promised you would hold me up. Lord, you, 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 you have said this, and I'm pondering up on it. Amen. Whatever God has said, you ponder that thing in your heart. You roll it over and over in your, in your mind. Carefully, quietly, when you meditate, meditating, you quietly, you're listening. You're thinking. You're pondering. You're rolling it over and over in your mind. But that the God has spoken to you and you continue to do this. It may be lengthy at times where you just, just you just thinking throughout the day. You need a time of meditation to meditate upon God, to meditate upon his word, to meditate on things that are good and perfect. Amen. Pure and holy. Amen. To meditate. Meditating is very important. Listen to this. Meditation clears your mind and it gives you clarity. Understanding. Serenity, peace, quietness, amen, assurance, the state of being calm, here it is, peaceful, untroubled, just meditate, just meditate, think. Sometimes you need to just clean out your mind through meditation, meditating upon God's word. Where would show a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed to the word of God. Amen. Lord, you promise to keep me in perfect peace. When you meditate on God's word, you may be all disturbed. You may be nervous. You may be anxious. But as you begin to meditate upon God's word, then peace just comes. God's word begins to calm you. As you begin to think on God's word, amen, that that he has spoken to you. We must be careful of what we think because it will determine who we will be. Whatever you think, that's what you would be. So you have to be so careful. What are you thinking? If you're thinking negative all the time, you're going to be a negative person. If you're thinking, uh, uh, I'm not going to make it, guess what? You're not going to make it. If you think uh, you're the worst person in the world, then you're going to be the worst person in the world. But you have to meditate upon God's word. Meditate on what God said uh, concerning you. Just like Gideon. God told Gideon he was a mighty man, a, war, a, 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 a warrior. He spoke that to Gideon. Gideon didn't believe it. He didn't believe it at first, but he began to think upon what the Lord was saying. He began to believe, okay, Lord, this is what you said. I'm going to act upon your word. And as he acted upon his word, he became a mighty warrior. So it's what you say. What a man think in his heart, so he will be. So you have to be so careful what you think. You have to be careful what people uh, 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 put in your mind. You allow them to put in your mind. Because you can become. That's why we have to be so careful how we speak to our children. We have to be so careful how we speak to other people. Because somebody going to believe what you say. They may be ever so good, but he keep on saying, you bad, you bad, you bad. They may do a bad thing, but that don't make, that don't make them bad. Amen. It's when you continue to do. So you can tell them, hey, what you did was wrong. But you know what? I have faith in you. I believe you're a good boy. You're, you're a good girl. Amen. Speak into their life. Amen. Teach them how to think positive. Amen. Teach them how to think what God has said. Amen. Concerning them in the word of God. Uh, Proverbs t uh, 23 and 7 says, For as he think in his heart, so is he. There it is. Eat and drink. Whatever you eat and drink, that's what you're going to be. Whatever you eat and drink, that's what you're going to be, both physically and spiritually. Whatever you put in your mind, that's what you're going to be. Whatever type of food that you eat, that's what you're going to be. Amen. And so be careful of what you put in your mind. Amen. Be careful what you're eating. Be careful what you're drinking. Elder Sherrod used to share with us, don't eat from everyone's table. That's both spiritually uh, naturally and spiritually. Watch what you eat. Watch what you allow people to say to you. Amen. Watch, don't allow people to bring tail bearing and, and lies and, and things about other people. Don't allow that. 
Because you'll find yourself thinking upon those things. Amen. And when you're thinking and you're dwelling on those, those things, that's what you begin to see. That's what you begin to believe. And it may not even be so. Amen. So you have to be so careful. Do you want to think on those things that are pure, those things that are holy? Philippians 4 and 8 said, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That's New Living Translation this morning. Amen. This is what Mary did in, in, in our scripture we read. I'm asking you that you read this at home in your uh, Bible study. She examined attentively, deliberately, pondered. She thought and she wrote it over carefully, quietly about the, the matter that the angel had shared with her concerning the Christ child. What an amazing time as she went through the process of life. She had a clear understanding and clarity because she continued to meditate upon the things she had heard. I found, this is personally, I found that meditation to be a great source of strength in my life. And, have, and, and, and I have made it a part of my prayer and word life. We all need a time when we just meditate upon what the Lord is saying to us in prayer and in his word. As we read and study the word of God. We must meditate upon it so we can practice it in our everyday life. Meditate upon it, and then after you meditate upon it, do it. Be a doer of God's word, because he said if we're here only, we're deceiving ourselves. Be a doer of that that you're meditating upon, that that you're thinking upon. Be a doer of that. I think I can make it. I know I can make it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. Even things that are wisdom, meditate upon these things. It will help you in life. Amen. Wisdom gives you how to go in and out. Of situation. So when you speak, when a person is speaking, speaking to you and it's wisdom that's speaking through them, listen to them. Children, if there's any children listening to us this morning, listen to your parents. Amen. Listen to your leaders. Listen to your pastor. Listen to your supervisor. Listen to those are, that are your leaders. Listen. Amen. Amen. Meditate on what they're telling you. Amen. It will get you through life. We must renew our minds daily by the word of God. Take time to speak to yourself and think of what the word is saying to you. Think on things that are positive, pure, honest, true, and a good report. Keep negative thoughts out and do not allow the world system to corrupt you. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These things will deceive us. So we have to keep all of that out of our heart. How do we do that? By meditating upon the God's word. And after meditating upon it, then being a doer of God's word. Here it is. Here it is, Romans uh, 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Don't conform to the system of this world. Don't conform. And the word of God will tell you how not to conform. The word of God will tell you how to abstain from the appearance of evil. I was telling my friend to read Proverbs. Proverbs shares with us the ins and outs of life. Amen. Proverbs share with us how to know seducing spirits. Proverbs, we may not want to say this, but Proverbs deal with drinking, alcohol. It tells you when... When not to do it. It tells you the characteristic of it. When not to touch it. It's all in God's word. But are we willing to read it? Are we, willing, are we willing to study it? And then are we willing to meditate upon what God's word is saying? Are we willing to get an understanding? Not just read it and say, oh, I don't even know what it said. No, go back and get an understanding. Read it over and over until God gives you an understanding of what his word is saying. And then the word will prove itself. The word of God will confirm itself. You will find out that God's word is true. Hallelujah. It's true whether you believe it or not, but you will find out that God's word is, is true. And then as you live the word, listen to this, as you live the word, people will see you living the word and it will prove to them that God's word is true by your life. 
by the, your lifestyle, by your walk in God, they'll look at you and say, you know what? I believe the Bible by the life that she lives. I believe the Bible by the life that he lives. It will prove itself. Amen. God's word is perfect. Amen. There's nothing like the word of God. I love the word of God. I love it. I have learned to love the word of God. I live by the word of God. And when I'm not coming up to his word, you know what? I know I'm not coming up because his word lets me know. Amen. And he don't condemn me, but he helps me to come up higher. Hallelujah. He don't come and beat me up, but he chastised me and showed me how to live his word. But I have to meditate upon it. I have to remember what his word said. He said, when he chastised me, not get upset, say, oh, the Lord's chastising me. What's going on? No, he said, them that he loved, he chastised. So, oh, the Lord don't love me. No, he loves you. Remember what his word said. Meditate upon Oh, okay, that's right. He loves me. That's why he's chastising me. Because he's trying to keep me from falling into that pit. He's trying to keep me from falling into that hole. What did David say? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Why is that might there? Because I still have a choice. It's my choice. But if I meditate upon God's word, his word will come. Amen. And it will strengthen you. It will hold you up. And then he said, I will bring all things to your remembrance. Amen. But you have to put it down in you. You have to meditate upon it. And then when you need it, it'll come back up. And it will help you to be perfect in Christ. Amen. We don't have to keep on falling. We don't have to keep on going around the same mountain. We can be successful in life. Now to him, here it is. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling. And present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God I say be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and now. And forever. God is able to keep us. We don't have to keep on falling. He will teach us, but we have to meditate. As I was sharing with you a few weeks ago, when we do fall, study it. Study the pattern. Study, study the cycle. How, take time to study. Why do I keep on falling? Why do I keep on finding myself in this same situation? Take time to meditate, to think upon it. What's, what, what is this? Let me get to the root of this. The only way you can do that, you got to think. You have to think. You're waiting for someone else to solve your problem. No, you can solve it through God and through his word. Why does this keep on happening? Why do I find myself with the same type of people? Why do I find myself in the same situation? Why do I find myself in the same cycle? Hallelujah. How do I break this cycle? Hallelujah. It's all in God's word. And then once the answer comes, then you need to, to dwell upon it. To study it. And as you study it, God will walk you through it. Amen. Woo, praise God. Colossians 3, 1 through 2 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. If ye, then, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. That's our problem. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek the things of God. Seek the things above. And then some people say, oh, oh, you're always thinking about heaven. You're always thinking about the things, uh, godly things. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. And God will help you, and he will help you with your natural needs, your natural wants. The Bible said, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God is concerned about your natural needs. God is concerned about your want, but he says, set your things on, set your affection on things above. Look to him because he is your source. He is your teacher. He is your guide. He is your friend. He is everything that you need. So he's already been through what you're going through. So if you look to him above your situation, above what's going on around you, what's going on around, it's real. But how do I get through this? COVID-19 is real. If you're dealing with an illness, it's real. If you're dealing with your uh, different things, with your emotions and mental uh, 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 situations in your life, all these things are real. But if you look to him, he's the source. He said, look to the hills from whence coming your help, or your help come, it comes from the Lord. But you have to think on his word. Meditate upon his word. Meditate upon what God has said to you. Amen. And as you meditate upon it, God will teach you through it and bring you through it. 
So set your affection on things above and not things of this earth. Uh, if we practice what God has given us through what we speak, here it is. If we practice, ask yourself, am I practicing? I know it. I read it. I've heard it. And in meditation, it's good to meditate upon it. But now after you meditate upon it, you have to practice it. You have to walk it. You may not feel like walking. You may not feel like you can do, but you meditate upon, Lord, this is what you said. I'm going to act upon this. I'm going to believe your word. As the minister said on last Saturday, I'm going to trust you. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct thy paths. My God. So practice what God has given you through what you speak. Be careful what you speak. Don't just speak everything to come to you. Even if it's true, don't speak it. Amen. Be careful what you speak. And be careful what you think. Thoughts is going to come. I don't know how. I, I try to be as honest in this area as I can. Thoughts are going to come. But don't entertain them. And there are times thoughts are not just going to always leave immediately. That's just being real. And sometimes sometime the devil condemns us because we feel like, well, I'm having this thought. And some people even, I've heard people say in the church, well, if you think you might well go ahead and do it. No. I'm telling you right now, no. No, you counteract that thought with what God's word says. Oh, I, 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 I you know, I want to go out here and have, me, have my, you know, sex. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit adultery because I'm thinking about it. So since I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do it. No. The Bible said flee. The Bible said run. Amen. Jesus was saying when they think, when you're entertaining it, when you're enjoying it, you're dwelling upon it, then you committed adultery in your heart. But if you're running from that thing, if you're saying, Lord, help me with this, if you're counteracting with the word of God, I, I, I will think pure. Lord, I thank you for my wife. Lord, I thank you that if you don't have a wife or husband, Lord, I thank you that you're going to give me a husband. You're gonna get, and until then, God, you're going to keep me. Think on what God's word says. Counteract what God's word says. Don't allow the devil to condemn you and make you feel guilty of something. Thoughts will come. Birds will fly over your head, but they don't have to nest in your, your, your hair. Amen. So don't entertain it. Amen. Don't, 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 don't feed it. Amen. Avoid it. Amen. And think on the things of God's word. And not just concerning sexual things, whatever it may be. Think on what God's word said. I'm not going to get no job. I've been looking for a job forever and it seems like I'm not going to never get one. No. Lord, I don't know where it's at, but you said they that wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. You told me to wait with expectation. You told me to wait and believe in you. Oh, God, good things come to them that wait. Lord, I'm waiting on you. And until you give me the job, I'm going to work the one that I have. If I don't have one, I'm going to keep on looking. And, Lord, in your time, you're going to bless me. You're going to make a way. Well, how are you going to make it? Lord, you said that you would take care of me. You said you take care of the sparrows. Lord, you said you take care of me. So, Lord, I believe it. And God will do it. As you meditate upon his word, while you're thinking about what God has said, you're here to knock at the door. While you're thinking about it, some money may come in the mail. While you're thinking on what God has said and you're rejoicing and you're praising him, God will make a way for you. Woo! So meditate upon what God has said. And then you will, you will have a successful, quality life. A peace in this present world. You can have peace in this present world. Things are going to happen. That's life. The enemy is going to come. That's life. Everything is not going to per go perfect with you all the time. That's life. But meditate upon what God has said. And as you meditate upon his word, as you act upon his word, God will manifest himself. In other words, he will make himself known in your life. God will be whatever you need him to be. God will do whatever you believe that he will do. And sometimes he may not do it the way you want it, but God will make a way out of no way. He, he'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert because he said he would. Amen. And so we trust in God's word. Amen. We believe in God's word. So as you meditate upon him, as you think up, upon him, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. As I think of his goodness, sometimes things are going on in your life and you feel yourself going down. But as you begin to think on him, you'll find yourself coming back up. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for your many blessings. 
We thank you because, Lord, we look to you. We look to the hills from whence come our help, realizing our help come from the Lord, which made the heaven and earth. So, Lord, we ask that you continue to strengthen us, continue to help us, continue to be with us, O oh God, as you promised you would be, O oh God. And, Lord, help us to meditate upon your word. Help us to think upon your word. Oh, God, help us to remember the things that you have said. And then, Lord, help us to be doers of your word. Lord, I ask today that you forgive us and forgive me of anything I may say or done, oh God. Cleanse me, wash me, and make me whole in you. Oh God, and I thank you, and I praise you, and I magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Continue to think upon him, continue to meditate upon him and his word, and he will do that that he said. God bless you.